Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video and today is a Yuzu progress update. Now this is for December 2022 and this includes Vulcan changes, a new input driver, some kernel work and more performance, better visuals and a lot more. So let's get through it nice and quickly. The link to this will be down below if you want to read more carefully through it. All right, so basically Project YFC, uh, basically it skips some sort of double checks with the GPU. You have to read into it. It's, it's more complicated than that. And this improves performance in games like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Bayonetta 3, Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, and it fixes the crashes in like Fire Emblem Warriors as well. Um, so yeah, let's look in the numbers of how much performance has been boosted. You probably already saw it in the title, but let's look at it. All right, so here are some numbers. Now, instead of 25 FPS, you got 30 FPS. And this is with a mid-range PC, by the way. So a Ryzen 5 5600X, DDR4 RAM, and a RX 6600. So it's not the highest of the highest specs they tested this with, but also it is still a gaming PC. Now, in some games, they saw over 30% improvement and yeah, that is just crazy. Um, so yeah, for Breath of the Wild, you would have had 5 FPS more as well. Super Mario Odyssey is literally a 15 FPS improvement, which is crazy. And yeah, basically it's, it's like this down the line for all games. And as they say here, the goodies don't end because they did something with Vulcan, which makes the shader cache lower. So you'll need less RAM, less VRAM, and it will be the same performance or better. And yeah, for some people, so let's say for NVIDIA people, you need the Vulkan beta drivers to really get these results. So keep that in mind. Another thing of this YFC project is that normal GPU accuracy is much safer to use than before. Now, of course, GPU high will still give you the best results in terms of, you know, particles and more detailed stuff. But yeah, as they say here, games like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and Bayonetta 3 and many others can be played with normal accuracy without glitches much more regularly with the big performance benefit this provides. So if you have FPS issues, try normal GPU accuracy. So they also change the smoothness of objects. So basically, if you don't know, SMAA is a anti-aliasing method I don't know if YouTube compression will show you this, but if you go to the site and you drag it to the right, you'll first see what it was before. The edges are a little bit rough and square-ish. And if you go to the after, everything is smoothed out. So every game should look better in general. Again, go to this website to really see the difference. But this was before, as you can see, it's a little square and, and weird. And now it's just better in general so yeah as an example look at the tv in pokemon scarlet and violet this is it before and this is it after it's less blocky as you can tell this also fixes some missing stuff so this was it before in this game and now as you can see the plants and the tree log are there as well as the rock here so in the start, the stats were not showing as well on the Pokemon game, but as you can see now, everything shows and you probably already noticed if you updated your Yuzu. Same goes for the Shika GPS signal in Breath of the Wild. Now you can actually see where you have gone and where you haven't. So another thing is they fixed this. So basically the tree is now showing as well as the grass here in the back, which wasn't before, which was making weird shadows. And the game just looks way better now. So they also did some things with the CPU stuff. So uh, yeah, the performance uplift reached up to 12% on Windows. The maximum age of CPUs, which most of you, you shouldn't really have these anyway, is now the first generation of the Core i series. So that's really old, almost 15 years old. And uh, yeah, and for AMD, it's uh, almost 12 years old, the uh, FX and APU series. For those really old CPUs, the percentage boost is 7%, which is pretty damn decent. Now this was on a beefy laptop running a RTX 3080 mobile, keep that in mind. And the second system runs on a 
basic gaming PC, but with a 4090. So this is an extreme case. Uh, and this is again for the link time optimization, which improves CPU performance. So let's look at it. Okay, so in here, it's basically a 3% improvement overall, but that's nice. That's nice. 3% is 3%. You got to take it. Now, they do say uh, that 8 core Ivy Bridge Xeon, which you bought for 20 bucks, is not fast enough for this task. AKA, the newer CPUs, even if they have the same clock speed and cores, they'll have more cash in the CPU, which basically means it can handle more stuff uh, <laughs> to make it sound really simple. So yeah, really, really old gear, even if it has eight cores, yeah, you should probably just upgrade to a newer architecture. They could have cut everybody off with two old systems and it would leave a bigger improvement in performance over the users on Yuzu, but that would kill off 9% of their user base. So of course they're not gonna do that. So. Because that's so many people, they decided to wait until more users adopt more modern CPUs. Yuzu can improve more, it's just the user base, not all of them have the newer CPUs, which is definitely understandable. So yeah, it could have been more FPS improvements. Hopefully they can make like separate builds for newer CPU users that will boost FPS even more, I don't know. Now they also have a new Joy-Con driver which means you can actually use your Joy-Cons easier with Yuzu now. And yeah, your LEDs will show on your controller blinking to show that the emulator is taking control. And once you're in game, the LED will show your player number as regular. Now HD rumble, AKA more detailed rumble is now also in Yuzu. So that's nice. And it automatically reads the color of your Joy-Cons, which I mean, I really don't mind it too much, but it's a nice touch. Amiibos can now be loaded with putting them on the Joy-Cons as regular and the ring controller is now fully supported, which is really nice. Also, which is pretty cool, the IR camera on the Joy-Con is now also fully supported. Now make sure you have a decent Bluetooth, USB or built into your motherboard, otherwise it might be a little bit crap. If your rumbling doesn't work, just turn it off in settings basically if you have a really cheap USB. Bluetooth device. Now the IR camera can be a little bit slow because they lower the resolution that is putting it into Yuzu for performance reasons, but I think you can either set that up at some point or they'll make it better in the future. Also, you don't have to refresh the input list anymore, which is awesome. You used to do that when you connect your controller while you're already in Yuzu, but now you don't have to do that anymore because it just detects new devices instantly. And that is a nice, very, very nice touch. They also did a workaround for crashes caused due to unallocated memory. Now normally, if your game's being weird, it will fill up your RAM and then everything will crash. Uh, but now Yuzu will crash before filling up your RAM, which saves you time, but also is easier to troubleshoot because that mostly means that you have a weird mod, a broken game file, or something like that. Also, they changed some code to reduce your RAM memory use a little bit, which is also very nice. Now, they also changed some audio stuff, but I wouldn't really try. And even they themselves say, we still don't recommend using it over GLSL, but Mesa users report they enjoy it. And again, it says experimental, so maybe don't do that. Also, for streamers slash YouTubers, if you want to record Yuzu in windowed mode, uh, you can now. Also, a nice touch is that Yuzu now remembers your last folder that you chose to install a file to Nandi, aka an update or a DLC, so you don't have to find your folder again, which is nice. Also, instead of Yuzu freezing when you close a game, it will now say closing software, so it looks less likely that it's gonna crash. Also, they fixed an early soft lock that affected the Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl games. Now, that's basically all for this progress report. They have stuff coming soon. Let me know if you want me to make more of these updates down below in the comments. And uh, yeah, again, the link to this whole thing is down below. And uh, have a great day, everybody. Peace.